Good afternoon everyone out there in YouTube land. My name is Jared and this is my channel Mazda B3K. In this video we are going to do a drain and fill on the coolant in my 1989 Ford F350 7.3 liter IDI diesel. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so this diesel is new to me, it's new to the channel, and one of the first things I want to do is change the coolant. It's actually really, really important before I run the engine anymore. Why? Let's take a look. So, it may be hard to see, but there is nice green coolant in here. You think, well, that's fine. Actually, no. The problem is, the 7.3 IDI diesel has a problem with cavitation. Essentially, the shaking of the pistons makes little tiny bubbles in the cooling jacket. And then when these bubbles pop, they actually damage the metal wall of the cylinder. If this goes on and nothing is done, eventually it fails and blows a hole in your cylinder wall and then you need to re-sleeve the engine. That's not good. So Ford, after initially denying the problem for a long time, finally said, oh yeah, you need to add additives that will function as a sacrificial wall. They'll cling to the wall of the cylinder liner and they will protect it from this cavitation, these little bubbles popping. And how you're going to do it is you're going to put it in your coolant like this stuff. This is peak fleet charge. And as you can say, see it has SCA pre-charged, pre which means it already has that sacrificial additive in it in the correct amount. And this is already diluted, so all I got to do is pour it in. Now, I already know from this sticker that this is a remanned engine. This is not the original engine in this truck. I think it's low miles. It hardly ha it has no blow-by, period. So I think we have a good shot that if I switch it now, I'll get a nice long life out of this engine. So all that being said, let's find the petcock and start the draining process. Okay, I am under the driver's side of the engine, and there is our pet cock. It's right next to our main radiator hose line. So I'm going to get it. Oh, wow. Didn't even have to get pliers on it. So you're going to want to pan in position. This is going to kind of run down and go everywhere. But we want to drain from the pet cock first so we can have more control in our draining process. And we're going to keep the radiator cap on for the moment. Again, more control in the draining process. We'll crack that open once we're comfortable with what this is going to do. Okay, so coolant is now filling this little tray here. That's not good. I don't know where it's going to come out. There it goes. Okay, cool. All right, I like this. So we're going there. Coming down here. Going in there. I do not intend to reuse this coolant, so I'm just going to start capturing it, and you're going to capture a lot. It's going to be a couple gallons worth, because, you know, diesel. So I'll get back to you once we move on to the block drain in the engine. All right, folks, we've got about four gallons out of the radiator. We're going to try to get some out of the block. So you see there's a bolt there kind of front and center. Uh, this is the driver's side of the engine block next to the oil filter. And I'm pretty sure that's a block drain. There's one right there. And then you see that little square jobber over there? That's another one. I think what happened is this one got replaced with a standard bolt at some point in its past. And I see there's like some Teflon tape hanging off of it. So I'm going to crack that open. I think that's a 9 16 So we're going to check that out real quick. If I can get in there. Let's see. Uh, nope. I need a short 9 16 I shall be right back. Okay, that was fun. So... Indeed, this is a block drain. Indeed, it's a 9 16 And I had to get my breaker bar out to break it loose. It was in there pretty tight, understandably. Uh, one thing to note, that's a big old passage. 
so when you get this far enough out to go it's going to go and it'll probably shoot the bolt out and then dump a whole bunch of coolant so be ready have your catch pin ready all right so i'll let this drip for a moment but then i actually need to track down the bolt get that back in before i do i'll take a pick and i'll kind of root around in there and see if how much rust is kind of laying around it can be an indicator of like the health of your cooling system uh this just it was like noah's flood it just went so i don't think that's an issue in this case but i will check then we'll close this up and move over to the passenger side block drain and we'll repeat the process all righty kind of blocking my light source there we go all right so took a look at this and this is factory so the factory actually installed a drain plug that is not an in like an inside uh allen which is really nice because these you can actually put tooling on which is kind of good so i'm gonna put this back up put some pipe dope on it to help it seal And just get it to thread uh, there we go now we're threading so let's get it to thread and then I will tighten it up the rest of the way by hand I'll give it a good snug to make sure it's tight tight because you don't want this coming out obviously once the system is under pressure and you're going down the road, that would be bad. You lose your coolant in a hurry. So I'll take care of this, and then I'll go pop the one on the other side. Okay, so let's see if I can get it to focus. Uh, check inside the truck. So there's our target. It's right next to the starter, and because it's next to the starter, I'm disconnecting the batteries before... I go after this. I don't want to touch the wrong thing to the wrong thing and then electrify myself. So, just a little word to the wise. Alright, so we're back in. We're doped up. I cinched it tight with the breaker bar. It's not as tight as when I pulled it out, but I think that'll do. I'm going to measure how much coolant we got out. I think it's around 2 gallons, which puts us pretty good. One last place we got to get coolant from is going to be the overflow tank up top. So I will remove that, empty that, and then we'll be ready to start filling. Okay, so we have proper lighting and all that. We've got a 5 16 that is over here that we got to remove to try to get the bottle out. I've never done this before, so I'm not quite certain how this all works. Kind of learning it with you guys. Let's move our EEC relay. Okay, so that's loose, which is good. But this washer bottle is held... something some sort of a tab system and not sure how to get that loose but I need to get that loose in order to lift this bottle out because the bottle itself is loose but I got to get this bar out of the way so let me dig into that all right, I think the way that we do this is we're going to separate the washer bottle from this T-bracket. There are two 7 16 nuts, one over here, one over here. We're going to take these off, and hopefully that lets that bracket come out, and then we can get the tank out without having to do anything too crazy. Okay, this one's barely on there. It's interesting. It looks like somebody... Started, started to try to bring this truck back around. I've seen some new parts. I've seen new belts, newer hoses. But then you can see where this truck's also, you know, kind of old. So. Uh, da, 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 da. 
da, da, da. Almost got it. Okay. So you can see now that the, the bottle just fell out of the bracket. So let's see. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it just sits in it. Just sits there. Okay, cool. So we can just kind of get that out of the way. I don't know. Okay, I'm trying to get the, there we go, the hood latch out of the way. Which kind of lets us do this. Yeah, all right, so this is designed just to kind of lay back. And then we just lift this out. And there you go. Yeah, that's exactly how it's designed because there's the, there it goes. Okay, cool. Now I know how to do that. So I'm going to get the rest of this coolant out and then we'll actually start the fill process. All right, got everything back together. Everything is plugged back up. Let's go ahead and start filling this puppy. I have six gallons of this fleet charge. That should get us pretty, pretty close. And uh, you can find it at your local Napa or equivalent. Otherwise, you'll need to go to like a, like a big trucking supply place or like a Cummins dealer, international dealer, or something like that. They'll carry it, but... Your regular auto parts stores are not going to carry this stuff. It'll be a special order. And it's a very distinctive color. As you can see, it's a purple pink. So if it starts leaking, you'll know. All right, update. So got this thing full. Finally. Now, of course, I fully expect this to start to drop um, once we actually idle this thing a bit and it burps out air. I took the rest of that bottle. I poured it into the overflow. There's no mark that I can see that indicates where the overflow should be filled except for over here. There is a mark right here. I don't know if this is cold fill or hot fill or what, but... There's a mark. I would have to do more research to figure out where's the right mark on the bottle. For now, what's going to happen is we're reconnecting the batteries. Right, because we took them off when we took the block drain loose near the starter. And this thing's got a bum fuel tank selector valve that I need to fix. And I need to do that because I want to switch to the rear tank, which is full of diesel. And the front one's almost empty. And I don't want to bring air into this while it's idling. So going to do that. And then I will conclude this video after we idle it for a bit. Make sure we don't have leaks and all that. Good morning, everyone. Today is a new day. So we filled out the coolant system yesterday. We let it run, revved it up, got the thermostat, the dump, and all that. So let me check the cap here. Pulled the level down a little bit, not a lot of bit. I gotta use this gotta really lean on it to get this cap on. And I overshot the target. Dang it. There it goes. Let me check it from over here. Yeah, it looks like it pulled the level down a little bit, but I'd say the system is pretty full at this point. Definitely enough for operations, so I will consider that a success. Coolant system flush, drain and fill complete. Alrighty folks, that's going to do it for this video where we did a drain and fill of the cooling system in my 1989 Ford F350 7.3 IDI diesel. If you found this video interesting, if you found it entertaining, if you learned something, Please consider like, sharing, and subscribing. That helps to grow the channel, which lets me bring you more content like this. 
please also leave a comment. I like to read them, I like to reply to them, and I like to learn from them. And lastly, guys, I make mistakes so you don't have to. I'll catch you guys next episode.